Dear friends, hello and welcome today to the Euronaval show at the MBDA booth, which today presents incredible novelties with supersonic missiles, the future of the Scalp cruise missile, the Exocet anti-ship family with this superb specimen that will be delivered soon, and future stealth missiles. We will start with what already exists and has been delivered in 4,000 copies for the family and Exocet because the Exocet family obviously technology that started in the 70s that evolves which has been an incredible success also because it worked to the benefit Notably of Argentina against the British, we like to forget this episode at the moment but the reality is that it has always been at the forefront and the Exocet is a family. There are air C versions, there are CC versions, so it's not the same size, it's airborne in one case, it's navalized in the other, and there are new generations. That is to say that now we have heads in which we have radars that are in J-band. Radars, you know, they can be jammed in certain frequency bands, electronic warfare evolves, and so now we start working on frequency bands that are unprecedented unique. This is why it's the world's most efficient. So the latest generation ensures that you can achieve your goal despite defense and protection against electronic warfare from the ship that could be targeted. Come on, let's get back to our topic. The Exocet is a missile that has different variations. First, there is the Murmur Corante. It's the maritime version fired from the sea against the sea. You have the AM-39, which is fired from planes, like for example here the Rafale, but also why not from the Atlantic to aircrafts in general, not helicopters, because it's a bit too big. You have a version derived from the Murma Quarante, which is now in coastal defense. From memory, there were already countries that had it, and also Greece, which expressed its desire to have the latest generation of the Exocet to embark on its coastal batteries. And you also have an exclusivity, one want to say, because it's the only medium-changing missile that is available on the market today, which is called the SM Quarante. That is to say, this missile will be able to come out of the water, fire from a submarine, it will arrive above the water, and it will go a very long distance. The interest of the new generation that has just arrived is also the range which is beyond 120 kilometers. So when we say beyond something, it's certainly 150 kilometers in anti-ship, which allows submarines to stay out of detection range of the sensors of the boats, which obviously always progress on their side. So we always have this race between the shooting distance and the distance at which we get detected. And between our new submarines and these missiles that go further, obviously we have a head start and we can suspect that our partners, for example, the Netherlands who bought the Barracuda submarine, which is the non-nuclear version of the SNA, so it will be equipped with this kind of things and it's certainly a qualitative argument to win export contracts. We're getting to the future. So the future, you have two missiles next to me. We start with the subsonic. Do you remember the Scalp missile? That would potentially be the successor to the SCAD missile. You see the shape. We're dealing with an ultra-stealthy missile. It's subsonic, meaning it will stay below the speed of sound. We can see it has wings on top that allow it to fly. We also see something else that is interesting. It doesn't have an air intake. So one don't know if it's because it's an Expo version or if it's not yet defined. But if it doesn't have an air intake, it's probably a powder thruster inside that's going to spit out the back. And the other interest is that, obviously, since you have fewer openings, you're going to have a stealth that's going to be more effective, more interesting. You don't have the propellers that are inside, the reactors that are visible from the front, and that also allow visibility. So, it reduces stealth to have thrusters that are with air intake, so that take air, that take from the outside, to mix with different types of fuel. So, he will be able to be airdropped or fired directly from the boats. It's really the successor to the scalp and it will be able to strike both on the ground and against ships. In other words, our current missiles and launchers are no longer dedicated to a single mission type. And so, if we find ourselves having to fire against 10 ships and we only had 6 missiles that were available, now we can go fire all against the ground or all against ships. And so, it allows for adaptability to the situation which will obviously be much better. But we are moving forward with another generation of missiles which this time are supersonic. 
When they say supersonic, logically it means that we are beyond the speed of sound. But as we don't do things by halves at MBDA, it's high supersonic. That is to say, it's 3-4, Mach 3, Mach 4, Mach 5. It's up to Mach 5 because after that, it becomes hypersonic. And so we develop missiles that are complementary to have the whole range, which will also be mainly anti-ship and possibly against a ground target. While on the other hand, we were first against ground targets and possibly anti-ship. So this one is primarily anti-ship. What does it mean to have anti-ship? It means that in the missile's head, potentially, we send it to the place where we know there is a naval fleet, and before arriving at its stealthy target, if it can, it will light up its optics to be able to go to the impact. We suspect it will be equipped with radar rather than optics, as none are visible. And so that means that even this missile against ground targets could perhaps have an onboard radar to be able to detect its target. These are just assumptions based on its shape. You won't get any confirmation from MBDA. They won't give me any, even if one asks for it. So high supersonic, meaning it's ramjet technology, while on the other hand, it's a more or less classic turbojet. But here we are dealing with ramjet, so these are much more efficient technologies that can go much higher in speed. And you have the air intakes, which are very particular, which are close to what we have on the SNR-4G. This missile, it's futuristic, meaning it's the generation that will arrive in the next decade. We can say 2030, 2035, 2040. We don't know exactly when it arrives, but we're working on it. In other words, prototypes have already been tested and validated today. You have press releases. It lacks images in my opinion, but nevertheless, they have verified its stealth in specially dedicated rooms. Its stealth itself as an onboard electromagnetic CN charge, there are electronic equipment that will emit radiation themselves. We verify the internal radiation. MBDA tests the material's wave absorption capabilities in highly controlled rooms to ensure it does not reflect waves back. And he did, there have been tests for his propulsion system, for his ramjet, to see how it works. The other peculiarities of these missiles, it is precisely their great effectiveness against the evolving air defense. We have seen precisely in Ukraine with the feedback that despite the S-400, which has the best reputation in the world, the scalp hits the target, it goes to the impact with an efficiency that is 100%, it cannot intercept them. So, we are already developing missiles that can go to the next stage. So, that means we've seen it go very fast, be stealthy, but it also means having great maneuverability. These are missiles that have the ability to change their attitude depending on what happens to them. It's adaptation to the environment, when we get shot at, when we get jammed, we're going to change trajectory, we're going to change attitude, we're going to change altitude, and we're going to be able to have very significant accelerations, especially lateral, to be able to avoid threats and the enemy air defense system, if we were still detected. On the stand, we also have the new version of the Aster missile, the B-1NT, but for that, one refer you to an interview one did with the armament management on the Ministry of the Armed Forces stand. That way, you'll have more details. Let's take a little tour. The TCO is the sovereign Italian version of an anti-ship missile, so the local equivalent of the Exocet. The English, very recently, they have tested the Sea Venom, which is also airborne, which is rather light anti-ship that could be fired from a helicopter. And you have the Italian version called the Mart ER, because they too are looking to be sovereign in many different areas. All right. To finish this video, we come back to something that flies anyway, because it's the carrier that is also important. Look at everything they've put under the Rafale. It's still a bit of a dream, the MICA IRK, an infrared guidance system. The RF radio frequency meteors, which are, one remind you, the air defense missile with the longest no escape zone in the world. Meaning you have no chance of getting out, no matter the location and the maneuvers a targeted fighter plane will make. The AM-39, which is obviously the anti-ship, the Exocet we talked about, the Storm Shadow, also known as the Scalp, which is the classic cruise missile. Behind us, we even have the small anti-tank missile. Acheron missile, which is becoming an anti-everything missile that has also intercepted small surface ships that could attack us without needing to bring out heavy artillery with things that cost much more. One hope you enjoyed it. We were at MBDA at the Euronaval show. Innovations continue and surround us everywhere. There are small drones, teleoperated ammunition systems, and ground protection systems, among others. But one thing we're going to keep some small innovations, also for the Bourget, which is coming in not very long. One hope you enjoyed it, and one will see you very soon.